We serve a mighty and great God. Hey, thank you everyone for joining today for our live webinar here on the court. I'm so used to saying the courts of heaven. We're actually doing a training here in regards to um, uh, coaching, in regards to mentorship for healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Let me go ahead and get a uh, gallery here uh, so we can see a couple of people here. Thank you everyone for joining aboard. Dr. Scott is a special guest here today, um, and he'll be showing up in just a moment here. Uh, he's still on his way. And uh, what we're going to be talking here today is I'm going to put myself into a spotlight here so you can see me. What we're going to be going over today is exactly what, uh, uh, as you signed up here for, uh, today we're going to be walking through uh, and, and coaching and mentorship in regards to doing inner healing, doing deliverance, um, and Dr. Scott's our special guest here today. Again, he'll be showing up in just a moment here, and he's going to be teaching for about 30 minutes in regards to inner healing. Uh, this is the same material that is listed on the website. Let me share with you that. You can go and see everything here. Give me a second as I am going uh, to the right screen that I'm looking for. I believe it's this screen right here. Let me share here. Yeah, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. So uh, uh, what we're doing here today is uh, having Jesus heal, uh, so much heal, but Jesus is going to be uh, teaching us how to do deliverance and how to get uh, freedom um, for others in Jesus' name. I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen one more time here. Sorry about that, guys. Make sure that we're completely muted here. Um, and uh, there's a lot of screens going on here. So just give me a moment, guys. Thanks for being patient with me. And then mute everyone here. Perfect. Awesome. All right. And so number one, we're going to be talking about uh, inner healing. Um, if you feel this is your ministry, this is a great place to start um, because we need to be trained and equipped uh, through, uh, through God's word to how to heal the brokenhearted and uh, so that uh, we can help others to get freedom and uh, so that they can uh, as well help others to get freedom. This is the whole purpose of it all. You know, once you learn, uh, then you will master these tools. You'll get Get them down, and then you'll help your friends and your family members gain freedom um, uh, throughout the training. Not in this one here, but we'll also have some evangelism that we're going to be talking about. We're going to have examples of others going through the process. Um, and so, uh, in the very beginning, we're just going to open up in prayer. We're going to thank the Lord for a great day, Father God. We come before you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that today is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and we're glad in it, Father, as well. Thank you for this hedge of protection around everyone here, Lord. Thank you for being with them all today, Jesus, and as well as working on their hearts. Let seeds be planted into good soil, Lord, as well, so that they can grow and they can mature and understand who you are, Lord, as well. Uh, thank you uh, for bringing everyone here. You got them for a reason and a purpose while they're here, and Lord, thank you for uh, leading and guiding them into truth, Lord, as well. Thank you for being with uh, Dr. Scott here today as well, um, and uh, th thank you for using him um, as a vessel of for training and for instruction and mentorship in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Hey, we're going to share my screen one more time here, guys. Give me a moment. Let me make sure I get the, the screen in the right spot because I'm not used to my everything being the way it is. Thanks for, again, for being patient with me. Change things around so I can see what's going on here. Perfect. Now I can see everything that is happening. All right. Got our two screens going. We're going to share the screen one more time. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Now what we're going to do here is just, I'm just going to go over a little bit of what we're doing here. Uh, number one, we're doing the live deliverance, how to do deliverance coaching webinar that's happening right now. And uh, we're going to be going over in just a moment here, part one of inner healing training. Uh, this, this webinar here is uh, the base foundation. Why do we need to do inner healing first? And uh, Dr. Scott, rather than having him uh, always go through and do lives here, um, he's pre-recorded all of this information uh, so that we can uh, get it down, get some freedom, and then I'm going to give you some homework to do, guys. Um, as uh, you are here, um, uh, you can go to the very top, go to Get Free Training, Learn How to Do Deliverance. 
Go ahead. This is free of charge. Dr. Scott's made this available to the body of Christ. This is a little introduction into it. And then as well, it goes on to where we're going to be talking and teaching about right here. Module one, inner healing training. Please, uh, when we're done here today, maybe tomorrow, sometime this week, please watch the rest of this video here. Then as well, go through the second part of this where it shows inner healing clips as Dr. Scott brings people through the process to get healing and restoration. And uh, this is going to be a big blessing for you guys because uh, you want to learn, you want to get uh, this down. There's eight and a half hours hours of training here uh, of, of equipping the body of christ and we make it available directly on the website and you have to sign up for nothing of course we would love to have you uh, uh subscribe to our ministry to partner with our ministry um, by the way dr scott himself here um he is retired um this is his full-time gig um and uh, all he does all day long is help others to get trained and equipped and they get stuck, he answers their questions. He mentors them, coaches them. He doesn't charge anything. Of course, if you want to bless Dr. Scott, you can. You can bless him through our ministry or directly through Dr. Scott. Either way, um, uh, he'll see the blessing come through. And uh, we know that the Lord's going to uh, use him and his family um, as well. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for using Dr. Scott, having him be a vessel uh, for our ministry to be used by you, Lord. And we honor and glorify you for doing that in Jesus name. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here and uh, go over a little bit of uh, Dr. Scott's training and uh, go ahead and get that started just next here. I'm going to share my screen once again. The Lord told us that he came to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. Preach the gospel, heal the brokenhearted, set the captives free. And that's for all of us. So today we're going to talk about one third of that and that is healing the brokenhearted, healing people at the, at the deepest, deepest possible places. And when we talk about this, we're talking about inner healing. And when you talk about inner healing in this ministry, it's a, it's a term called altars. And it, it's a terrible word, and I never use it with people that I'm ministering to, but it comes from the term alternate personality. So I would never use this with somebody I'm ministering to, but uh, I just call them wounds. And uh, anyway, so we're, we're talking hey about... Hey, guys, look like I had a little problem uh, here. Give me a moment here. Uh, what is an alternate? Looks like we had a little technical difficulty, so thanks for being patient, guys. Hey, thanks for being patient, guys. Looks like we're just having a technical difficulty for a moment. Hey, thanks again, guys, for being patient here. Go ahead and share the screen one more time. We'll get Dr. Scott speaking once again. So funny, everything was working just fine and dandy right before we got started here. Looks like we're just having a little technical difficulties. It's all right. All right, we're going to get that going. The Lord told us that he came to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, set the captives free. Preach the gospel, heal the brokenhearted, set the captives free. And that's for all of us. So today, we're going to talk about one third of that, and that is healing the brokenhearted, healing people at the, at the deepest, deepest possible places. And when we talk about this, we're talking about inner healing. And when you talk about inner healing in this ministry, it's a, it's a term called altars. And it, it's a terrible word, and I never use it with people that I'm ministering to. But it comes from the term alternate personality. So I would never use this with somebody I'm ministering to, but uh, I just call them wounds. 
And uh, anyway, so we're, we're talking about altars. We're, we're going to talk about uh, several things I have in a list here. Uh, what is an altar? What causes its creation? The characteristics and the effects of these wounds? Healing this woundedness? The relationship between demons and altars? Because they're not the same. Altars are a hurt part of our soul. And the demons are, are a spirit, demonic spirit. And how do we get these little hurt parts of people up and talking to us and get them healed? Problem altars, and then a couple other little things that don't fit in any other category. So, uh, first of all, we're going to talk about what is an altar. An altar is just a wounded part of our soul. It oversimplified, we're a three part being body, soul, and spirit. Your spirit's what's born again, your body's your body, and your soul's your mind, your will, and your emotions. When we get hurt bad enough that we can't cope with something, we disassociate. Uh, you just kind of go away in your mind for a little bit, and uh, at some point you snap back. And you can go away for just a second, you can go away for, for a day, you can go away for, for years. And when we do that, when we check out like that, it causes a tiny little split in our soul. And this is where all the pain and all the memory is all held, right back there. It's like a little file in the back of your mind that, uh, that just holds all that. And every time we get hurt badly enough, it creates more of these little splits. And again, they hold all the pain and all the memory. It's all back there. This is also where Satan attacks our lives. So this is what we're talking about. Soul wounds, the deepest possible soul wound that you can have. The medical community's got a whole bunch of names for these. Bipolar, manic depressive, multiple personality, dissociative identity disorder, alternate personalities, uh, post-traumatic stress. I mean, there's, there's just a million names for them, but they're, they're just man different manifestations of wounds, of soul wounds. So that's what we're talking about here. The ability to dissociate, to check out like that, is not a disorder. It's a gift from God that we're able to do that. It gives us a place for all that pain. allows us. It's a coping mechanism. allows us then to go on with our lives, to grow up, go to school, get married, have a job, and go on with our lives. And these little wounded parts of us are caused by one word, trauma. And the obvious ones are physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, any kind of real heavy-duty abuse, that, that'll cause these. But with little children, little kids don't have any coping skills. Kids, uh, they have no coping skills. And it can be just the slightest little thing, a rejection, or a, you got a mother uh, in a grocery store. She's got a little, little two- or three-year-old kind of toddling along, and she goes around the corner to the next aisle. That little child's playing with something that looks sweet and neat on the shelf, and uh, all of a sudden looks up and mom is gone. Absolute sheer panic can go into that little child, enough so that they disassociate and create a wound like this. We got a little boy. Uh, two or three years old, really excited about seeing dad when he comes home from work. Dad's had a long day. He plops down in, the, uh, in his lazy boy, flips the TV on, and here comes this little boy, so excited to see dad. Daddy, 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 just can't wait to see dad. And dad just, just pushes that little kid away and just goes, oh, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. You know, he just wants a breath after a long day. That kind of rejection can just crush a little child and cause a wound like this. So all I'm saying is uh, it's really hard to get through this life without, without being hurt, much less all the, the stuff that happens to us as an adult. So the altar's purpose, again, is to hold the memory and hold the pain of the trauma. That's where it's held. People can have none of these wounds. They can have they can have two or three of them. They can have two or three hundred. They can have two or three thousand of them. You're going to run into people that have suffered uh, satanic ritual abuse. They've grown up in a in, a, in a, sat a satanist family, and they create these things intentionally, because they know when those wounds are created, in in comes demons, and that's where they torment us. And so they're doing it on purpose. So when you run into them after they've escaped from this house when they're 18 years old, they've got they've got 20,000 of these little hurts, and that that's not even exaggerating. These little wounds can be created as early as in the womb, and they can be created when you're 90 years old. So uh, and you're going to see it in the womb lots and lots of times when you minister to people. Uh, you got a little 14 year old girl gets pregnant. And she's not ready to have a baby. She's, she's barely entering high school. And so she's thinking and talking about abortion. What do you think happens to that little child? That little child can feel that rejection. And, and so it causes a wound. You'll get people that will say right, right in front of you, they'll say, I felt like I was rejected right from the womb. Guess what? They probably were. 
or, or maybe the little boyfriend who doesn't want this baby. Maybe the girl wants it and uh, she's starting to show a little bit. He pushes her down some stairs or starts punching her in the stomach or something to try to create a miscarriage. What do you think happens to that child? They get a wound. So you, you've got these little hurts right in the womb. Or it can happen when you're 90 years old. Something happens you can't cope with. As your coping skills increase, the fewer and fewer of these wounds are created. Um, if I was in a grocery store and there's some three-year-old little child walking along and I lean over this child and they don't see me and I just scream at this little child, that's probably more than a little kid can handle. They would just check out and there'd be a wound. If, if I did this, I'm 60 years old. If I did this to a woman, a 60-year-old woman, she'd just kind of turn around and go, hey, you know, just buzz off because her coping skills are better. So as your coping skills are better, the fewer and fewer of these wounds happen. So the best place to find wounds in people's lives are when we're children. We don't even realize how badly we got hurt. I want to talk briefly about the characteristics and the effects of, of dissociation of these wounds. Uh, first, people with dissociation are, are commonly highly intelligent. Um, the moment one of these wounds is created, the little place in their mind that holds the pain is it's, it's a little tiny personality that stays at the age as when the original trauma happened. So if you've got a two-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a ten-year-old, a twelve-year-old, it, it takes a lot of mental horsepower to keep track of all this in your mind, keep it all in order. So you're going to find people that have been hurt are highly intelligent. Some of the effects. The number one effect of, of having wounds like this first of all, is depression. Anybody that tells you they have depression, without them telling you, they're telling you, I've been hurt, I've been hurt. See, the little hurt parts hold all that emotion, and that little part down there is always at the level of the emotion is when the original trauma happened. So that's, that gets triggered, and inside of you, you get all that emotion going in there, and there's no place to go. What do you think happens to you? You get depressed, and down you come. And once you get the wound healed up and the demons gone that are tormenting that, the depression leaves. So depression, number one thing, any kind of self-harm. I've probably ministered to 800 people that, have, that are cutters. We call them cutters. They do self-harm. There's a lot, of way to cut, a lot of ways to cut. You can actually cut yourself. You can, you can uh, bite your fingernails down to where they bleed. You can, you can uh, pierce yourself. You can break bones, burn yourself, pull hair, uh, tattoo yourself every square inch. Uh, put those gauges in and, and just keep getting bigger and bigger gauges in your ears because uh, there's just a lot of ways to cut. So you'll see that a lot. Any kind of self-harm. Somebody's telling you, I've been hurt. And, and the reason they do that is not, it's not they're trying to kill themselves. They, they we're really only capable of hurting in one place at one time. So it, it gets uh, hurting so badly on the inside at some point. They do something. They cut on the outside or do something uh, to harm. And immediately it just... It's just, it's a release for them. It's a relief. And the pain stops temporarily. Just seen tons and tons of them. I, I see people that are, that are covered with tattoos every square inch. And they got some tattoos in some places that you know if they're, when they're filling in color in those places for an hour or so, man, that's got to hurt a lot. And then I ask them, gosh, you know, that's got to hurt a lot when they're, when they're filling in that color. What do, you, uh, what do you do when they're doing all that? And, and invariably, every single one of them says the same thing. They just say, oh man, I just go to sleep. I just go to sleep. Because they're out of their pain. They're out of their pain. So real common. Um, emotional overreaction. We all know people uh, you see at work or see at school or even in your family. Somebody does the slightest little thing to them to irritate them and they go to a 10. I mean, they go instantly to rage. Uh, Remember those little hurt parts hold emotion that they're always at the level as when they as when you they were originally created. So when they get triggered, the person goes right to that level. And once you get healed, they don't they don't react like that anymore. No more triggers. So emotional overreaction, really, really good indication that somebody's been hurt. Another one, lost time. Lost time. You're gonna run into lots of people that say, I don't remember anything before I was nine years old, or I don't remember anything from first to third grade. They're telling, remember when we disassociate, you can go away for just a little bit, you can go away for a moment or two, you can go away for a week, you can go away for years in your mind when you get really hurt. You're just not ready to come back and handle what happened. But all the memory is back there. But so when somebody tells you, I don't remember anything from first to third grade, what are they telling you? Where'd they get hurt? 
they got hurt in first grade. Something happened back there in first grade and they just kind of checked out for a couple of years. And then they were finally ready to come back. But all the memory is back there. So lost time. Another good indication people having trouble praying or reading, trouble, uh, having trouble reading the Bible. As soon as the instant that a wound like this is created, instantly demons come in on that and it's multiple and they're on that wound that is that is hurting and uh, and they're, lying, they're they're either aggravating the pain in that or they're even lying to that little hurt part of your mind maybe even telling you hey if god really loved you he wouldn't let this happen that this is god's problem this is god's fault don't be reading that bible so when they're trying to read and when they're trying to pray they got a part of them inside they're not as well as the demon keeping them from from praying and keeping them from reading their word and once you get that healed up and the demon's gone many times their prayer life gets better and they're able to read the word so real common real common the core person up here this we call this the core person up here they can be amnesic of the trauma they can be have little bits and part little bits and pieces of the memory of the trauma or they can they can uh, remember the whole thing everybody's different and every wound is different and uh so I want to tell you the most important thing that you're going to have to know about these little wounded parts is that this little hurt part knows, of your mind knows its job. It knows that it holds a specific emotion or, or, or some specific pain. And so if it holds, if it holds anger, this I get people that ask me, is this biblical? Is this in the Bible? Well, one third of Jesus' ministry was healing the broken heart. So yes, it's it's in the Bible. Um, Jesus healed people's broken heart. It just didn't explain how he did it. Um, and they ask, is it in the Bible? And uh, yes, it's in the Bible. Remember uh, the demoniac, for instance. Somebody loves that story. You had the demoniac. He's in the tombs, and he's running around out there in the middle of the night. He's screaming out in the middle of the night. Uh, he's got terrible emotions going on. He's up and down with his emotions. He's uh, he's breaking chains. Remember, they tried to chain him, and he's breaking these chains. Now, when you, when you have a wound that, that is that is up to here with emotion, <clears throat> maybe it saves even terror, and you have a demon of terror on that thing just tormenting that wound, and what, what do you think happens to your adrenaline? Boom, you get a huge bunch of adrenaline. If you've got chains, that's when you can break that kind of stuff, is when you get that big adrenaline rush from all that emotion. So you got him doing that. He's, he's screaming out in the middle of the night. Many, many, many people that have traumas uh, have terrible nightmares in the middle of the night. And that, a lot of the reason is because, of course, you got the wound that holds the trauma, whatever the emotion is, and you got demons in the middle of the night tr trigger that wound. And so you wake up having this horrible nightmare. And, and, or just it can, it can trigger that stuff anytime. You've also got, if you remember, he was, he was running around. He was gashing himself with rocks gashing himself with rocks. We just talked about this a moment ago. He's a cutter. He's a cutter. There's a whole bunch of ways to cut. This guy's hurting so badly on the inside that he, that he can't take it anymore, and so he cuts on the outside, and you know that's a relief for him. I've done this for 800 people. So the guy's a cutter. He had wounds. He had wounds. So at some point in this whole process, Jesus healed this man. He was in his right mind. He was dressed again. And it, all of the big change scared people in the church or in the uh, in the city, and they asked him to leave. Also, uh, another good place, uh, and it doesn't say anything about altars or anything, but um, you got the uh, the woman at the well. She's been married many times. When Jesus asked her, "Where's your Where's your husband?" and she says, "I'm not married," and he says, "I know you've been mar what, married five times or something. And you're living with her six, something like that." And uh, think about this lady. You this lady, you know she's pretty. She's she's a uh, married five guys and she's got another guy that she's living with so she's attractive but and she you know one other thing about her she's not running around on these men remember what they used to do to women and people that, that ran around in those days they stoned them to death this woman's not running around on these guys on these five guys more than likely she's driving them nuts with her emotions up and down like this and even even if she didn't have many wounds coming into her first marriage which she probably did have some because he divorced her Imagine having five guys divorce you, the, the disgrace in that, in that society, the abandonment, the rejection, and all that disgrace. It would be enough to, to make anybody disassociate. And she had this happen five or six times. So she's driving them nuts uh, with her emotions. And all that emotional overreaction just screams of a wound. 
so real common. Um, emotional overreaction. We all know people uh, you see at work or see at school or even in your family. Somebody does the slightest little thing to them to irritate them and they go to a 10. I mean, they go instantly to rage. Uh, remember those little hurt parts hold emotion that they're always at the level as when they, as when you, they were originally created. So when they get triggered, the person goes right to that level. And once you get healed, they don't, they don't react like that anymore. No more triggers. So emotional overreaction, really, really good indication that somebody's been hurt. Another one, lost time. Lost time. You're going to run into lots of people that say, I don't remember anything before I was nine years old, or I don't remember anything from first to third grade. They're telling, remember when we disassociate, you can go away for just a little bit, you can go away for a moment or two, you can go away for a week, you can go away for years in your mind when you get really hurt. You're just not ready to come back and handle what happened. But all the memory is back there. But so when somebody tells you, I don't remember anything from first to third grade, what are they telling you? Where'd they get hurt? They got hurt in first grade. Something happened back there in first grade and they just kind of checked out for a couple of years. And then they were finally ready to come back. But all the memory is back there. So lost time. Another good indication people having trouble praying or really trouble, uh, having trouble reading the Bible. As soon as the instant that a wound like this is created, instantly demons come in on that and it's multiple and they're on that wound that is that is hurting and uh, and they're lying they're, they're either aggravating the pain in that or they're even lying to that little hurt part of your mind maybe even telling you hey if god really loved you he wouldn't let this happen that this is god's problem this is god's fault don't be reading that bible so when they're trying to read and when they're trying to pray they got a part of them inside they're not as well as the demon keeping them from from praying and keeping them from reading their word and once you get that healed up and the demon's gone many times their prayer life gets better and they're able to read the word so real common real common the core person up here this we call this the core person up here they can be amnesic of the trauma they can be have little bits and part little bits and pieces of the memory of the trauma or they can they can uh, remember the whole thing everybody's different and every wound is different so, and, and this is one, one kind thing that you can do for people. If you find out from a, from a wounded part some trauma that happened that the person doesn't know about, maybe it's that they're amnesic, maybe, maybe uh, you find out their father raped them or something when they were really small. When, when, the alter, when you're done ministering to that little hurt part, you don't want to just tell that person, hey, your dad raped you. You don't, don't want to tell somebody something like that. So, so what, what I tell you to do here is to let the Holy Spirit bring the memory to them when they're healed when they're completely healed and when they're ready to hear it. And, uh, and here's how the Holy Spirit does that. It's like uh, taking a bowl and flipping it upside down, dunking it under water. And so once you've got the wound healed, uh, the Holy Spirit will, will just tip that bowl up a little bit and all of a sudden they'll get a little bubble that'll come up and they kind of go, oh gosh, I think something happened when I was about six years old. And then a little bit later, might be weeks later, a year later, or just hours later, another little tip of that bubble or that little bowl and the Holy Spirit lets them another little part of the memory come up. And they go, oh my gosh, I think somebody touched me. And then a little bit later, he'll tip it on up a little bit more. Oh my gosh, I, I think it was my uncle. And then pretty soon the Holy Spirit will just tip that bowl completely over and they have full memory. But by then, the wound is completely healed. So all I'm saying, don't tell people horrible stuff that, that they are amnesic of. Just let the Holy Spirit do the work for you. And uh, so I want to tell you the most important thing that you're going to have to know about these little wounded parts is that this little hurt part know, of your mind knows its job. It knows that it holds a specific emotion or, or, or some specific pain. And so if it, holds, if it holds anger, the slightest little irritant to you pops this little part up that holds the anger. He, it brings, brings it up to take it and hold that. And uh, so when we get these little hurt parts of people up and, and triggered, the first thing we're going to want to know is, what's the emotion you hold? Because it holds us, and it knows its job. So I might as well talk a little bit about, uh, about the, once we get these little hurt parts, what we're, the information we're going to get. In fact, uh, the only thing you have to memorize in all of this inner healing bit is, is three bits of information you're going to get from the wound, and we're going to do three things with it. Three bits of information and do three things with it. And the first thing, of course, is to get the emotion. And uh, I, by the way, I'm including this little script along with this module, and um, as well as all these notes. So you don't have to keep take notes. It's all right there for you. You can just print it out. 
Um, anyway, you find out, first of all, you get this thing triggered and up and talking. It's a little hurt part of them, not, not a demon. It's a little hurt part of somebody. And, and we find out what's the emotion you hold. And then we also want to know how old it is. Because remember, it, it kind of stays at the ages when the original trauma happened. And so you don't want to be talking to a five-year-old like a 45-year-old, you know, or vice versa. So we want to know how old it is. We want to know what happened. Who hurt you? What happened? And uh, because forgiveness is a big part of this. When people talk about, about um, the root of bitterness, this is where the root is. You're going to run into tons and tons of people that'll, when you've, they've been brutalized by some uncle or their father or mother or some, some person many, many, many times. And you ask them, hey, do we, you ever forgive that person for all this stuff? And they'll say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've dealt with all that. It's all behind me. Yeah, no problem. Done. And I, in my mind, I'm just rolling my eyes going, yeah, right. That's all gone. And, and this is where it is. This is where the root is. So anyway, we're going to get the age. I mean, I'm sorry, an emotion, an age, and what happened. And once I know those three things from this hurt part, I'm going to ask the Lord to come. Lord, come. And the Lord says he's closest to the brokenhearted. And this is the broken heart. There is nothing deeper than a soul wound that deep. That's all there is. That's the bottom. And he comes every single time. And once he has healed that wound, I have that little hurt part declare I break the curse of whatever the emotion was, fear, shame, guilt, anger, whatever it was. And then I ask that little hurt part of the person, can you forgive? Can you forgive that person who hurt you? And now the pain's gone, and so it's, it's, it's pretty easy for them to forgive at that moment. And that's really all the way down there. That's really forgiving. So, uh, and I'll teach you just a little bit about what happens if, if they can't forgive. So, um, I want to talk briefly about healing this woundedness. I want to talk about how the world does it, how the church does it, and how we do it. First of all, the world, you got your medical community, their counseling, self-help books, therapy, uh, psychiatrists. They do a wonderful job of talking to the soul. They rarely ever get down here. And if they do, they don't know what, they don't have anything to actually heal it. They, they give people coping skills. But, you know, they can get that little multiple personality, that little wound up and talking over and over and over and over for year after year after year. It's still there and the pain's still there. And uh, so it doesn't actually get healed. You go to your pastor of the church and you tell your pastor, I got rage, I got anxiety. And he just says, well, you know, he, he's talking about your spirit here. And, and he tells you, well, you need to pray more, you need to read the, read the word more, you need to listen to some Christian music, go to some Christian counseling. He's doing a wonderful job of feeding your spirit, but he's not getting down here. He's not getting all the way down here to the wound and getting it healed. So I want to talk about how we're going to do it. First of all, our biggest problem here is you got the wound, and then you have demons on top of that wound that, that torment that wound, and they do not want you in there. That's where they have their claws in people. So we're going to use the Word of God, Hebrews 4.12. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than a, than a two-edged sword, even to dividing of soul and spirit, bone and marrow, thoughts and tents of the heart. But when you, So when you declare, I divide soul and spirit, you're really not dividing the person's soul and their spirit. You're dividing the demonic spirits off the hurt part of your soul. So the moment you declare, I divide soul and spirit, instantly the demons come off that wound. So now you can work with this without interference. And at that point, I'm going to ask the Lord to come. Jesus, come. And when he comes, he does one of two things. He either just takes the emotion, just takes the emotion away, or he brings truth to a lie. Takes the emotion or brings truth to a lie. And instantly that wound is sealed. It's instant. And it's permanent. And it's us and just so you know, it's usually four words or less. It says just a, a very short, whatever he says. It's just right there and it's over. The... Uh, wild thing about it is that you could say those same things to that little hurt part of the person. It would still be there tomorrow. It would still be there the next day. You could do it every single day for a year. It would still be there. Well, when Jesus says it, it's over and it's permanent. And at that point, once it's healed, I'm going to have that little, little part declare. I break the curse of whatever the emotion was. Let's say it's terror. I break the curse of terror. And that little part declares, I break the curse of terror. I ask it, <clears throat> can you forgive your uncle? Can you forgive your dad who did this? Yes, I can. I forgive. And at that point, I just tell that little hurt part, you just go with the Lord. You just go with the Lord. And uh, people are kind of one way or the other. You'll either hear them say, oh, 
gosh, I saw him walking away with that little girl. I saw him walking away with him in his arms. Or, or they'll just, or you'll hear him say, well, I just kind of felt it lift. I just felt it lift. You got two basic kinds of people out there. Oh, it's almost 50-50. Some people are real visual. Some people are very analytical. So they're not, they're not visualizing. So um, what's a really important part of this, and we'll get into how we trigger this, is not to get real visual with people. Hey, do you see Jesus there? Or, do you know, is he holding your hand or anything like that? Because the analytical person is just going to freak a little bit like, oh my gosh, what's the matter with me? Is something wrong with me? I don't see anything. Uh, we're, and, and that's just not how they're made. They're very analytical. With the, the uh, visual person, they may see that little child walking away, holding Jesus' hand, and walking through a little field of flowers next to a creek. I mean, so just ask the Lord to come and then have them go with the Lord. And it's over. And that little hurt part will never trigger again. It will never even come up again. You can't even get it to come up. It's just over. So remember, there's really only three bits of information you have to get, and then you have to do three things with this information. That's all you have to memorize in this ministry, in the inner healing ministry. All this other stuff that I've been giving you is just is just information to give you an overall picture of what's happening. If you can get the emotion, the age, and what happened, and then ask Jesus to come, break the curse and forgive, and go with Jesus. That's all you need to memorize. Once you can do that, you can heal anybody's deepest wounds. Because it's really not you. It's Jesus. Hey, man, I got my uh, my phone, my thing finally working here. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, man, well, we got Dr. Scott here. We wanted to go over uh, this particular thing here because um, we're going to be, as well, just asking questions um, of anyone that would like to ask questions of Dr. Scott. I'm going to put Dr. Scott next to me as well as a spotlight. Here we go. Dr. Scott, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining aboard for today's um, uh, online training on uh, learning how to do deliverance. And we're first learning the first steps of inner healing. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Scott. Go ahead and share whatever the Lord's putting on your heart just at the moment. Gosh, just uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be here. Amen. So looking, looking forward to everybody's questions. Praise God. Uh, the first part here that uh, that Dr. Scott was sharing about was inner healing, the base foundations of this. And um, I, I believe, uh, Dr. Scott, uh, as you were sharing, you know, the, those two people, uh, the analytical people, the visual people, um, a lot of times if they don't hear uh, hear God or if see him or whatever, uh, I, I've also learned that uh, sometimes they can go back to the memory and search themselves if they're not paying attention or don't feel any emotion, they're feeling emotionless, that, that they can search themselves and have Jesus uh, reveal to them that that got healed right at the root as they go back to that memory and pull it back up. Have you seen that happen as well, Dr. Scott? I have. I have. Just call me Scott. Everybody else does. All uh, right. All yeah. right. Uh, yes. Same thing. He, like I said, he just takes the emotion or he kind of brings truth through, through a few words or a little vision or, or whatever, whatever he does. I, I don't ever try to limit him. Yeah. They just go back to the memory and there's no pain there. The memory's all there, but no pain. Amen. Exactly. Hey, does anybody have any questions? Have you gone through the training? You got questions for Dr. Scott? Myself will be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Have you tried to do deliverance for somebody? Have you tried walking someone through inner healing? Um, uh, do you feel like this is your ministry? This is a great time to ask questions. We got Amber over here, and I'll go ahead and ask you. Um, you I'll get myself out of the way, uh, Amber, and I'm going to add you to the spotlight with uh, Dr. Scott here and i'll get myself out of here hi amber i sure hi. Can. hi um i've been going through a lot of inner healing myself and um i've had a lot of uh manifestations and god's already brought me to a lot of places and healed a lot of places um have you i actually found you through a friend of mine who had been delivered from water spirits okay and just so you know i mean i know this stuff is real because i've had actual coiling in my body and in my chest and that kind of stuff have you have you a couple of different things have you come across these kinds of very animal like you know actual manifestations and 
is there a, a like I, I've done a lot of different people helping me with this, but I know their wounds, but I've definitely um, there's places in your life like Leviathan is king of pride. Um, God's been helping me. I literally just got delivered today from uh, allowing um, childhood uh, entities and in, in talking to them through my stuffed animals. Something left me. <laughs> so have you come across that kind of thing? And how do you deal with that? Well, anything that, that you have an emotional, you know, problem or where you're noticing an overreaction emotionally that that is a wound with demons on it tormenting the whole thing if you're experiencing um like uh pain in your in your in your neck and it moves down your shoulder down to your arm maybe over to this side that kind of thing something moving around or touching in the middle of the night or something that, yeah. that's a demon but right. the only reason he's there and able to do that is because there's a wound so yeah, yeah I've, I've done this for 12,000 people, 1,500 okay. pastors. So yeah, right. there, there's, I haven't seen anything new in 10 years. Okay. And so there's a place in me I'm trying to get to. Okay. And I keep asking and asking, asking the Lord. And I know he's peeling off layers, peeling off layers. And I know part of it was SRA because I've been getting little flashes of memories. Okay. And um, I've been working with Bride Ministries and... They're dealing with a lot of things and I've actually had, um, I've had prophecy and I've actually been in places in Oregon where I knew children died Yes. and I've, part of what I've been going through, I feel is actually other, other, uh, other people I've, I've had, I don't know if you've come across that one. <laughs> Pain from seen. other victims. Yes, I have. Um, okay. it's, it's still your trauma. And, yeah. if you, and have you watched this self healing and deliverance yet? Or have you just, just I have. Okay. I have. Um, okay. Well, you can use so. old memories to, to you know, divide soul and spirit, get the demons off, and go to an old memory and replay it in your mind. And then at the worst moment, just ask the Lord to come. Or you can use the triggers. Um, when you get triggered because yeah. those are probably just old wounds that you don't remember and the holy spirit will allow you to get triggered so you can get those healed up as well yeah yeah so i guess it's just time of him pulling all those places out in a yep. sequence that he knows yeah yep, exactly and we're all in a big hurry we all want a magic bullet magic pill right now i want to be done yeah it's, i I've, totally understand yeah but I'm, it's yeah it's, it's not process fun. <laughs> i know i know not fun. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. Sure. Thanks, Amber, for showing up here and uh, joining the board. Uh, we'll be going to call on you again if you have another question, okay? Thanks again, Amber. All right, looks like we have somebody else that has a question here. We got Nikki uh, that has a question. I'll go ahead and ask Nikki to unmute. Hey, uh, just for everyone here, just to let you know uh, that uh, we're not walking you through the process of going through deliverance or inner healing. Um, if you're looking to do that, please reach out to myself uh, to do that. Uh, this isn't the place, this is more for coaching and mentorship. You think this is your ministry? You feel like God's called you to do this? Uh, if you have questions, please act, ask doc, Dr. Scott. He's more than happy, or myself, uh, to walk you through uh, what, uh, the next steps so that you can help someone else get some freedom. Uh, Nikki, I'm, uh, I have you here. It looks like you're muted. Um, you're unmuted. Uh, Nikki, if you want to show yourself on camera, you can. It's up to you. But if you have a question, go ahead and ask Dr. Scott or myself. Okay, hi guys. So my question is is like the so the topic is pretty similar to what Amber was saying. And I definitely do feel like this is something that God has called me into, but I have a lot of questions and it's not just for me, it's for other people. So um, you know, I have this is new to me. Um, I've spoken to people in my community and it seems like um issues with with demons and stuff is like something that's on the rise but nobody just is talking about and I'm kind of just blown away about it so my question is like in a case where you have people or multiple people who have just been victimized by something like this who are not living per se like a 
life of like nothing, no mortal sin, nothing really bad, you know, just normal human being things and striving to be the best person that they can. Like, what do you do in that case when they don't really have any traumas that they're holding on to? How would you deliver that person? Well, if you, if you can, if you break the curse and command some spirit to leave in Jesus name, if it doesn't go instantly and permanently, then it has a legal right to be there. And about 99% of the time, it's a wound. And they may say, I can't tell you how many people said, well, I haven't had any trauma. I'm, uh, but once, at some point, if we have to, we get the demon up. And the demon, knows, the demon knows where all the wounds are. And they'll expose stuff. And they'll end up going, oh, my gosh, I, I didn't even know I had all, this, all these wounds. Or, or you know, all, the memories kind of started coming back. So is that helpful? Um, to to an extent, but like I've had a, like a, a, a an incident, I'm gonna say, and like I said, it's not just something that's happening to me, but other people, okay. and you know that makes complete sense. But the thing of it is, like I know these people and have for a long time, so I, I believe and trust in what they say, and yeah. um, I know like the wounds, um, they're more of like, okay, I'll deal with it, it's over with, move forward, <laughs> and. Yeah the nothing that's really holding them back and I know the type of person that they are so I just can't figure out why they're not able to kind of shake what's happening and then like going to other people like for help I'm telling you if you go into uh, talking to, to just traditional people in my area they think this stuff and and I'm not trying to be rude but they think it's kind of crazy oh, the um, inner healing portion and uh, know about like demons and, oh, yeah. and people you know, other than in the Christian church, like other people are like, are you crazy? But like, I've had, like, I have an incident with someone who's experiencing something really extreme and I'm just really trying to figure out. And so are other ministers in the area, like how to help this person because um, they feel like they're either cursed or going through something demonic. And I absolutely agree just from what I've seen, but, and it seems like, um, in in some in some points things have gotten a little better and then others have just gotten extremely worse and i don't know how to help them and i'm just very concerned and i don't know what to do because we have like went over like i've went over the legal rights with doctors um, who are ministers and just all kinds of people and we just can't figure out like what to do or how to get this presence to leave well in in that situation i'd make the demon just tell me and you can do that. And people say, well, they'll lie to you. Well, not if you have them in the, have the demon in the courts of heaven. He won't lie to the Holy Spirit. And uh, if you ask him, why aren't you leaving when I command you to go? I have a legal right. Well, where is it? And he'll tell you. Get the wound healed. Get whatever the legal right taken care of. And uh, yeah. kick him out of there. So there's a minister uh, who asked. And um, that they actually were told no there was nothing there so that's why i just came here hoping that there might be like another angle that we could take to try to figure out like what's going on that what was not there there was no demon there or no what i'm not sure they I said understand. That, um he did what he he called a deliverance um a deliverance per presume and he asked the person and the person responded and like with his communications from what he was telling me um, he could not, like, he was told by whatever it was, I guess he did something similar to an exorcism that there was no legal right for the, for whatever it was to be there. Well, I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, they either have oh, yeah. a legal right or they don't. <laughs> They're pretty simple. Is it just for wounds? I guess. I, no, no, no. Out. There's, there's three different ways that demons have a legal right to enter it. And it's actually one, one, it's just sin, but there's three kinds. There's generational sin, sin of the father is upon the third and the fourth generation, which really means mm -hmm. perpetually there's sin perpetrated against you where somebody hurts you. And then volitional sin, voluntary sin. Some people really like their sin and uh, they like that demon. You know, whether it's lust or seduction or greed or whatever, if they like it and they want it, that demon's not going anywhere. Yeah, I get it. So in the case, because like what I'm trying to narrow it down, like in possibilities, if it were something that was generational, yes. it like per se, how would you get rid of that? 
I'd make the demon tell me how many generations back and on which side of the family came from. Because there are, we're talking about wounds, gener alters today, but there are also generational alters. Um, you've heard of a generational curse. A generational curse is just a generational alter that has rolled down to the family. You and I get every demon that our, that our ancestors had, unless somebody back there had done exorcism. And uh, mm -hmm. you're going to have those demons. And they can have a legal right in, in the generational sin that has rolled down. Okay. And then you said there was voluntary. And then what was the next thing? There's sin perpetrated against you where somebody's traumatized you. Somebody's molested you or beaten okay. you or reject, betrayed you, whatever. Okay. And then, of course, voluntary. I see. So it's one of those three. Okay. And the person's will is involved. You know, if they had voluntary and they really like their sin, that demon's not going anywhere. Mm hmm I see. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess that's, I guess that pretty much covers it because I'm just like really concerned and worried. So that's why I'm here, but I mean, I'd love to see it and listen and hopefully something that you guys, um, talk about can help. And then I, I would love to talk to you one-on-one -on -one as well. Call me anytime. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. How nice. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Nikki, for uh, asking those questions. Hey, uh, just something else for you, Nikki, as well. Uh, just encouragement. If that person that you're looking for them to get the freedom, if they're being uh, tormented by the enemy, they need to do self inner healing and self deliverance consistently when they're being tormented right at the moment. A lot of us aren't willing to do the work. Well, again, we were looking for the magic bullet, the magic pill for uh, restoration. I don't have to do nothing but jesus will be tugging on their hearts your hearts everyone's heart to start healing these brokenhearted issues and if we don't do it um then we're at our own fault for this because once we learn dr scott teaches you yeah you learn how to do inner healing some self-deliverance then when the issues do arise it's our responsibility to wage for warfare against the enemy, not in our strength and the Lord's strength, and bring up these issues and take hold of that vain imagination. Train it to be captive to God's word and then uh, get your freedom as well. So just some encouragement for them, uh, Nikki, and uh, our training on the self inner healing and deliverance, Dr. Scott's as well. Uh, both of it will work here. So just some encouragement for you in the future, okay? What a blessing. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, anybody else have any other questions? I'm looking to see if any hands are raised. Uh, I got everyone's information up. Anyone raising their hands just yet? Let me mute this other person real quick here. Anybody else have any other questions in regards to doing a self inner healing, coming before Jesus, um, in regards to deliverance? Any others? All there right, we, go. we got Kevin here. Hey, Kevin, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to unmute you here. Give me a second and I'm going to lower your hand and then uh, I'll as well uh, put you into the spotlight if your camera is on. I'm not seeing you're on there. That's OK. Uh, Kevin, share with me what's going on. Uh, what would you uh, like to bring and ask questions about? Hi, good day. Uh, you guys hear me? I yes. sure can. All right. Yes. Um, I'm part of a ministry, but uh, we don't have a, a really a specific deliverance or healing ministry per se. From time to time, the Holy Spirit would move and persons would get that. But I, I do feel we are called to that ministry for a long time now. Mm -hmm. It's just um, getting the proper training and understanding of certain things and how to go about it. And then, you know, the Lord led me to your web page by chance. And I signed up for this. And it, it, it is very informative. It is bringing a lot of revelation, a lot of insight. Um, in terms of like, you know, persons come up for wanting healing or deliverance for different things. And you may not know exactly how to, to treat with each individual. So. You know, a lot of churches just pray for the person generally and, and pray that the Lord would help them. And, you know, they, and next time they have another 
prayer, you see they come up again because they didn't really get the sort of um, help or healing they needed. So they, they, they keep coming up over and over again for the same, the same type of prayer, hoping that something different happens this time. So in terms of trying to help somebody that wants healing or deliverance, but they are not able to recall what was their trauma or hurt. What, how, how I, I heard um, Dr. Scott say you just come and he, yeah, he ask the demon to identify its legal right and whatnot, but, but how do you go about that and what are the other steps afterwards? Well, normally the manifestation is an emotional manifestation. So if they're seeing an emotion, they can use that whatever triggered them. If they are having some demonic manifestation, you can make the demon tell you the age and the emotion of when the wound happened or have the Holy Spirit show you. It, it, it goes either way. But it's once you know the age and the emotion, you can just divide soul and spirit and have them just, just ask the Lord to come to that six-year-old that holds the the shame or whatever it was. And if they get real still, he'll come, he'll heal the wound, and then you command the spirit to leave. Is that helpful? Um, a, a bit, yes. But um, in, in the case that, okay, you're asking them and, and they probably can't quite bring anything to mind. Where, where do you go from there? If, oh, if they get no memory of, of any hurt. Yeah. Well, what, what's the manifestation? Can you just tell me what, what, they're, what makes them think there's even a demon there or something going on? Um, well, I don't have a specific case, but... Uh, um, they're tormented in some way? To, yes, in, in some way they are tormented or they're having um, a lot of demonic interference in their life or dreams they get a lot of demonic dreams where okay. they're that's a great attacked question. by demonic beings in their dreams and they okay, dream that's a lot a great of example. demonic entities yeah. let's say they're in the middle of the night and they're having an attack by by a demon and, uh, all they got to do is use the word of god hebrews 4 12 i divide soul and spirit i command the spirit to go down and they're and the, since the demon is on tormenting a wound all they got they're already triggered it's already up so so kevin right then they just say jesus come now and and because that just he's already there, but it make, means I'm paying attention now. And he'll come. He'll speak a couple of words, or he'll just bring peace. And that wound is healed. And now that person can command every demon on that wound to go to the pit. And they'll okay, go. so so if if their demonic dreams are always along a particular line, would that indicate the the basis of their trauma that needs to be dealt with? Yep, they can use whatever the dream was, it triggered them. And they can divide soul and spirit so they get the demon off the wound, demons off the wound, and just use the emotion from the wound, from the dream to ask the Lord to come. And okay. then command but, the demons um, to go. And and you as being the minister, if someone comes to you with uh, that's all the information they have that they keep having these sort of dreams. Do you, you use that the same way with the same steps to? I would. To I go would. Through? I would. You know, once uh, once you've done one wound where they actually have a memory and the Lord comes, they they feel that they hear Him or they feel that that pain lift, and uh, now all the parts in the in the system know me, and so I can just divide soul and spirit and ask for the one that keeps waking up in the middle of the night, getting tormented. Can you hear me? And it'll come right up for me. Okay. The, the, the little wound, and we get it healed to command the demons to go. Okay, thank you. Makes sense? Yeah. Woohoo! I'm so glad that, that you're able to get that answered. Hey, Kevin, another piece here, just as an encouragement for you. Uh, sometimes when the wound's just right at its highest level, you know, just as an example, if they can't remember or recall trauma from their past, I get that all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't. Nothing comes up. You know, if, if that's the case, uh, then just whatever the the uh, emotion is that they're going through. I have despair. I feel anxious. I have fear. 
you can bring those issues up directly and do inner healing right on the spot. Walk through the same process, you know, divide soul and spirit, ask Jesus to come, you know, minister and speak to him and take away the pain. And uh, as you exercise your faith, you yourself, Kevin, or as well, those people, this will help you to keep your focus on the Lord. And then as well, again, all you're doing is just training your mind to obey God's word and take hold of those vain imaginations nations help them to learn how to do this because most people including ourselves kevin you know uh, d- uh you know uh, the ones that were uh, that, that do the same work usually don't do the work themselves you know <laughs> you know like the the mechanic you know he doesn't want to uh, work on his own car you mean i don't want to have to deal with demonic oppression but when it hits i, I gotta work on it or you know I, i'll get a bruise him from the enemy and i won't get freedom um so just some encouragement for you as well that there's more than rather than just any of these traumatic moments it could be just right on the spot as well Uh, hope that helped you as well kevin thanks again kevin for uh volunteering it looks like we got a helen here she has a question helen i'll ask you to to come on camera and then i'm going to unmute you as well thanks for uh joining aboard here today i'll get myself uh, out of here and get you in there uh, uh, go ahead, Helen. Share with me uh, what is uh, your question here for Dr. Scott or for myself? Yes, I have a knees problem. The knees joints hurts and like uh, look like it's us writing things. What kind of demon that is? How do they get in? Like, uh, how do I deliver myself from that hurts? And I, I don't want to not able to walk. Well, sometimes knee problems are just knee problems. Not everything is a demon. But uh, if there's if there is a demon there, the the simple way is that you can tell is uh, let's say you're getting some some arthritic pain and you divide soul and spirit and I command the spirit of pain in my left knee to go down in Jesus' name. If the pain goes down, if there's less pain all of a sudden when you do that, that's a demon doing that, mm. and you can make him then tell you the age and the emotion of when you got hurt. You just, you just tell him, how old was I when I got hurt when you came in? And you get in your mind, you hear four. What was the emotion that hurt me? And you hear or sense fear. Now, you know, you got a four-year-old part there that got hurt that holds fear. And then you divide soul and spirit and ask the Lord to come to that part. Okay, do, do I think I heard somewhere, some from somewhere, somebody says uh, the knees, these uh, joint hurts is something to do with for unforgiveness. Is that a true? Could be. It could be. There could be some unforgiveness in the, in that wound, but the unforgiveness normally comes because there's there's other pain there. You know, you've been rejected or you've been abandoned or whatever. And so now there's some unforgiveness there. And there's so lots it's not- of. Go ahead. Go ahead. So it's not every sickness is means demon. Uh, no. uh, lot sometimes we're just sick. I wish everything was a demon. So are we not supposed to just uh, not not sick supposed to be? Well, of course. I mean, it's all because of Satan and, and our fall, man's fall. But you're going to find out sometimes you have a cold. You just have a cold. You know, it's not a not a demon causing your cold. You didn't get enough rest. You're de- you know. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. I wish it was as simple that every, everything it was a demon and you cast the demon out and suddenly I'm... Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah, I thought it was that way. But thank you. <laughs> thank sure. you for explaining. Hey, thanks, Helen. Appreciate that. All right, we're going to go ahead. It looks like we had another person here. Let me mute Helen real quick. Uh, looks like Amber had another question. I'll ask you to unmute and then uh, lower your hand. Um, Amber, good to see you again, and then I'll put you in the spotlight with us as well. Uh, go ahead, Amber, what's your next question? Well, I was paying attention to the self question. That was actually one of my questions was, um, I mean, I'm getting self-deliverance. I've actually watched other people get delivered, even though I'm getting delivered. I mean, this happened, and God's a God of deliverance. You know, he just, he can do stuff. I've had a friend of mine get delivered from the same thing. And this is one I was going to ask about. Um, Because you talked about a wound or agreement there. Uh, One of the biggest deliverance manifestations I had was from black goo. It's a sentient being. It really is. And and I'm working with Pride Ministries. And 
uh, my friend and I both got delivered from some technology. And one of the things God told me I had to do was to renounce pride of my, my, cause I have a science biology degree and I had to renounce pride of the science. And that was, I guess, one of the inroads for it. And the moment I spoke, cause I asked the Holy spirit, my body was like shaking and this is real. It's happened. Uh, I said, what is this black goo? Cause it was triggered. And all of a sudden I was like, whoa. And a minute I spoke, it's the, the Holy Spirit told me it's the embodiment of evil. And as soon as I spoke those words after renouncing pride of, I, I did, I had a lot of pride of knowing about science and I had things, it was like several minutes of things just leaving me. So there's a whole new realm. And I'm sure you've run across all this is sure. technology and the occult and it's real. Yeah. And several times I've had things leave me from technology the cold i've had things so i mean this, this stuff is <laughs> i've been through it all too i've had yeah. probably everything happened to me i don't know i've probably seen a lot um so in those agreements you're talking about being able to ask the entity itself when it's inside of you yeah but it's a if, you know it's a lying spirit and i know right. that i'm dealing with those you know right <laughs> But so what the way I do it, I'm putting the demon before the courts of heaven. He's literally in the witness stand and Jesus is the judge and okay. Jesus has already told the demon exactly what he must disclose. Okay. And, and also the punishment if he lies. So you get the truth. And, right. and then, and the way, you know, that you get the truth is because he says, I came in because of her pride when she graduated from college and, uh, right put that ahead of you got or you got wounded somewhere and you go there and there really is a wound there then you know makes sense it's it's yeah, still all sin yeah because i'm still finding the it's the agreements and it's the so i there's been times i haven't been before the courtroom and god would just bring it up and i would be <laughs> like oh my gosh i renounced this and then yep. pow, something would leave me <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. He's right. He's so yeah. So I was just asking about because I had a quite quite a bit with me. Um, so I've I've had so many different kinds of ways things left me. And so getting that deliverance, okay, that helps with the courtroom scenario, asking the entity itself. Yeah. Demanding. Getting, we're not we're not begging. We're we're demanding. How demanding was I? in the courtroom. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Okay, that helps. Thank you. Sure. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Amber, again. Hey, uh, so another piece, uh, some of you, uh, when you've gone through, um, maybe you've gone through sessions with myself here, um, and uh, as you go before the courtroom, uh, Dr. Scott uh, does a little bit different. He is old school. He works with demons, um, and which is kind of, it's really cool, but we need to learn that way um, to learn Dr. Scott's way. But some of you here, when you've gone before the courtroom, uh, the Holy Spirit was your guide and the demons are bound and escorted to the courts of heaven. They stay and give their testimony before the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit then starts leading and guiding you truth. Uh, instead of asking the demon where this open doorway is, you would ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, uh, where did this open doorway come through? Um, and, so that you can get this freedom and then he'll tug on your heart usually legal rights uh, the open doorway where it got healed maybe a memory an encounter whatever um, and then brought, bring it through the same process with how Dr. Scott shares go through inner healing get the healing and, and restoration so that you can get that freedom um, some of you are hearing the Holy Spirit during this time we don't really talk about as much you know dealing with the demons as much we do have it in the training um, but it's just an extra peace if you can't hear the Holy Spirit. So just some encouragement for some of you here. Um, uh, Dr. Scott's training is very solid and, and on good foundations there. I, I love his training. He's, he's really helped me and uh, he's been my mentor for many years now. And uh, the only reason why I'm so good at this is because I watched his training over and over and over and over again. I wrote it down. Um, I wrote down everything for the self-inner healing. So everyone who goes through our self 
inner healing training. It's all because of Dr. Scott's training and equipping me and teaching me. And then, of course, me being a doer and bringing up the issues and helping people to get freedom as part of that. I see one more hand here that's raised. I'm sorry, Nikki. Will you uh, reach out to us about your question? Um, uh, and, uh, and then I'll be more than happy to answer you or try, uh, bring it over to Dr. Scott. Looks like our webinar is just about done here. Both him and I are done for the evening and for the day. We're probably going to relax and have some dinner. I know I am in just a moment here. But uh, before we go, um, uh, uh, Scott, did you have any extra pieces that you wanted to share here? <clears throat> well, this ministry is for everyone. It's not just for pastors. It's not just for Jesus. It's for all of us. He told us all to preach the good news, to heal the brokenhearted, to set them free. So get trained up and uh, and start helping some other people. And luckily, we don't have to, have to be completely finished to, uh, to help other people because Jesus is the one doing it all. And it's Jesus' authority making the demons go. So don't be afraid to jump out there and help people. Amen. Yeah, that's been great. I, I, I believe that it's important for us to learn and get this training down. There's eight and a half hours of training here that Dr. Scott has. I'm going to share my screen um, here as well so everyone can see um, where uh, the, you can go find this out on the website. On the website here, let me move a couple of things around. Got a lot of things going. It's going to go underneath free training. Learn how to do deliverance. When you get here, it's going to give you uh, all of Dr. Scott's information about the eight and a half hours of training. A little bit about Dr. Scott. He gives you the course summary right here directly on the website. You go through. What we were going through here today was module number one, inner healing training. We did about 30 minutes here. There's an extra 30 minutes of training. Please, when you get an opportunity tonight or tomorrow, please go over it. Watch the second one here in regards to the inner healing clips. When we convene together next month and we go a little bit more in training, we're going to be doing the second portion here of this training. And again, uh, I will be here. If Dr. Scott's available, uh, he, uh, he'll be in there as a, a special guest. Uh, we won't share uh, uh, until the very end. He'll just be a special surprise um, if he's available at this time. But um, my encouragement, please watch all of them. And then as well, um, uh, be a doer here, meaning that start helping people to get freedom. Uh, call on Dr. Scott. We have uh, free consults with him. Uh, uh, there's, uh, he'll be more than happy to mentor, coach you. You got questions, you get stuck. Um, hey, I can't get through this. And this demon came up. Uh, Dr. Scott will be more than happy to share and walk you through the process so you can help that other person get freedom. Um, a lot of the people that uh, he spends all day while I'm are people looking uh, for uh, additional coaching and help. Um, and so he's more than happy to help you learn as well. This is his ministry. Uh, this is what the God, God's called him to do. He retired from doing deliverance um, and now just helps equip the body of Christ. And I'm so happy uh, that the Lord has blessed Dr. Scott uh, to uh, show up here and to be our special guest. Thank you, Dr. Scott, for being here. I know I call you Dr. Scott. I know you said this, Scott, but I'm so used to calling you doctor in front of everybody just out of reverence uh, for, uh, for you here. Scott, thank you again for showing up. My pleasure. Yeah. Hey, uh, can we close in prayer, everyone? Uh, before we do, I uh, just wanted to do a, a share one more thing here with everybody before we go. We have a webinar that is coming uh, this coming Saturday, and this one here is a master class on the courts of heaven, and uh, it's free. It doesn't cost anything at all. It's going to be two hours of mentorship and training. You got questions? You get stuck in the courtroom scenario. Some of you are uh, learning to come to Jesus as the just judge. This will help you personally. This isn't so much for learning about deliverance. This is for your own personal life. You can come before the just judge, learn how to, uh, to bring up issues that you think are important for Jesus to heal and restore and, uh, and get some freedom as part of this. Um, and we're going to perish for this lack of of knowledge and Jesus now once he starts bringing these issues up he's going to call you to court 
And when he does, he's going to uh, uh, share with you there's accusations that stand against you. And the purpose here now is for uh, have, help you to dismantle these accusations and bring healing and restoration and then finish it off by doing your own self-deliverance in that courtroom. And Jesus will be right there holding your hand, uh, giving you everything that you need to know to get that freedom. And that's where we walk you through to learn how to do this. Simple and easy, I, I believe. It was December of uh, last year. Um, I, the Lord tugged on my heart. He said, hey, Timothy, this next year, I want you to equip the body of Christ to learn how to come before the just judge. He said, make it easy for them, simple, step by step, so uh, they don't have to depend on anybody. They can go directly before Jesus Christ. So just some extra encouragement. Please show up this coming Saturday for that webinar. Come expecting to receive write down questions, uh, uh, volunteer, we'll walk you through the process. Hey, we'll close in prayer now. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for such a great day today, Lord. Uh, thank you for being here. This is the day that you have made, and we rejoice, and we're glad in it. Lord, thank you for bringing everyone here. Lord, uh, you, you work on, on their hearts. Let the seeds be planted in good soil. Let them uh, grow into a great harvest as Jesus is watering it. Lord, they're going to be doers. They're going to watch the videos. They're going to see the examples they're going to start walking it out and helping others to get freedom right in their home, one-on-one -on -one with people. And Lord, we thank you for Dr. Scott being here and using him as instruction in all of the experience from the uh, years and years, over 20 years of experience you used with Dr. Scott. Thank you, Lord, for having this man of God and this knowledge come through. Dr. Scott, if you want to share any more prayer here and closing out, go right ahead. <clears throat> Father, <clears throat> I give thanks for this group of warriors. I give thanks for uh, they have the same heart as you, Jesus, to preach your word, to bring the good news, to heal their friends and relatives and themselves and to set them free. I ask Holy Spirit that you would guide every single step <clears throat> and that uh, through it all, that you would be glorified in all of it. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks everyone for joining aboard. I'll just stay on for a quick second here, just saying goodbye to everyone. If you want to say goodbye to Scott and say thank you, you can put See it in guys. the notes. Nice to meet you guys. Else. Guys, I have like one more question if I can. I'm so sure. sorry. Go oh, ahead. Scott. Right. Go, 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 go right ahead. Okay. Yeah. So um, going back to the generational curse. Yeah. So if if you're able to identify if someone like had like someone who um may have like sinned and they think that it's falling on them that I, like i need some clarification would that mean that all descendants would be punished for that or, or could it just fall on certain people and if that happened how would you clear that up like what would you do it's a pretty big question. Um, if you're seeing a pattern that has rolled down through your family, you maybe every male in the family dies at 58 years old, or every woman has breast cancer, something, something like that. That's a generational curse, which really means a generational demon and a generational altar. So actually, I hate to spend a whole bunch of time there, but that's all in the, uh, in the videos. It shows how to get all the way to the root of that. And, uh, so maybe in the next, uh, in the next question and answer, you'll have been over that and we, I can specifically get to some questions. Is that a, I'm, I'm ducking your question a little bit, but it's all right there in the training. Oh, it's in this training? In the training that you, in the, that uh, free video, all, all of my training, there's hours and hours. Okay, so yeah, okay, I'll, I'll check that out then. It's okay. just like, I just wanna make sure that I have it. It's on your website? It is, uh, and yeah, it's just where Tim talked about. Okay, yeah, because I think really that's like our only like option as to figuring out like what to do. And I was just oh, yeah. really concerned because things are just really, really bad for the, for it's just not a person, it's Absolutely. multiple people. So yeah, I really appreciate it. Sure. 
Hey, thanks everyone again for joining the board and then go directly to the website if you want to learn more uh, about the training there. Uh, all the modules are there. It's also on Dr. Scott's website as well. Uh, his site's super is easy. It's uh, innerhealinganddeliverance.org uh, uh, there and, uh, did, and uh, help get, uh, well, go through there and watch the videos <laughs> and get equipped and learn um, rather than, uh, you know, I, uh, did, uh, not getting it down, get it down by learning it and, and uh, meditating on it. And the Lord will have you watch over the ones that are the most important to you over and over again, because they're going to minister to you. Uh, he's going to start tugging on you and, and you'll be thinking about it. I know for me, when I was going through Dr. Scott's training many years ago, um, the Lord was just tugging and tugging. Go back again. Watch that one again. Oh, again, you want me to watch this? One? Yeah, watch that video over again and, and take some notes this time. And uh, you know what? Uh, that's where uh, the most of the uh, being equipped. Even though Doctor Scott and I, we've worked together in the past. We've uh, he's uh, been at our church and uh, ministered and spoke there. You know, I didn't memorize everything at the first time that he spoke to me. You know, there's no way to get it all down. You know, there's eight over eight and a half hours of training. So uh, keep watching it over and over again, and watch the Lord bring revelation knowledge to you during this time. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again. And everyone for joining uh, thank again you thank you dr scott thank you, you thank you bye guys thank you. Bye. i see you later bye-bye